What's going on everybody? Hyger Hybrid. First of all, I got a length of poly tubing, half inch pump hose. Got some quarter inch black poly tubing. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this container. Yeah. Just go nice and slow. You need to go super fast. You let the bit do the work. Otherwise, it's a point on hole. There we go. We're going to take our half inch grommet, okay, and our half inch fitting. We're going to insert that into that hole. Get it nice and wet, however you want to do it. So, KY or spit on it or something. I don't know. Make sure the lip is on the outside. Take that, do the same thing. And what you want to do is create a watertight seal between this fitting and the container. Connect your poly tubing. And if you're wondering what this is for, like I said, we're taking it back to the basics. I want to take DWC back to simplicity and fun instead of over complicating it just take my cutters and i'm going to reach i want to kind of sandwich this plastic tubing in between the handle so come on cut about an inch off and there we go this will show us exactly where our water level is in the container day on and day out through the rest of this grow. I'm kind of using the top of the lid. You can measure it out if you want to. If you want to be, you want to kind of use this triangle pattern or if you have a box pattern, you can kind of just gauge uh, the center holes here. And just kind of line up my, my mark there, where they are. Take my pencil, just kind of scribe down the middle. Take this. Line up with the next mark. The same thing. I'm basically creating like a quarter. We're gonna put one in uh, each quarter. Right here. One here, here, here. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna show you the layout. Six. So, I'm going to use a 3 inch Lenox blade for this. Take your time with this stuff. Okay, um, the reason I went 3 inch pots is my local shop did not have 5 or 6 inch pots. According to them, uh, they're having a supply and demand issue, uh, meaning that they, they're on back order. They haven't had them in months and they don't know when they're going to get them. So the only thing that I was basically I could get was this six, eight inch net pot, which is obviously too big for six of them. And yeah, definitely too big. The lips would definitely be riding over. So I didn't like this eight inch net pot. You can see here, it doesn't look like a net pot. It looks like a skimmer basket from a pool like a pool store and they just stuck this this sticker on here <laughs> this isn't a, a normal grow basket you can see the uh, the lines and how open it is enough space for the roots to get plenty of room to grow through but you can see how fine these holes are on the side it just this reminded me of a skimmer basket from a pool that's exactly what it reminded me of um, if I could get the five or six inch pots, I would definitely be going that route. Drill it in the center of that line off. Take your time. There's our first hole. Let's go check, uh, check it out before we make any other ones. Make sure it's sufficient. 
perfect. Let's do the next one. Alright, if you don't have a hole saw and a drill, you might want to trace it out with a pencil. And uh, cut it out with some kind of blade or something. So, we are committed. Let's go ahead and clean up the mess. Now that we got most of that debris out, you're definitely going to want to give that a rinse. Alright, let's see how she looks. Alright, so now we're going to drill that hole, a feed hole and a return hole for our cheddar lines. And you want to probably drill this one slightly larger because trust me, during, the, during this grow, you're going to be fiddling with this pump and the return line. Probably not the return line, but more, more likely the, the, uh, the feeding pump. Sometimes it does get tangled with roots and I will show you a little trick in regards to that, to prevent that scenario from happening. So we're just going to same thing, we're going to step it up to a one inch. I think this is roughly seven eighths. It looks like it's about seven eighths. So I want to go about one eighth of an inch bigger. After I just got done vacuuming all that shit up, huh? <laughs> same thing here, about one inch away from the side. chunked that hole. That's all right though. It was going way too fast when it broke through. Vacuum up this nasty mess again. A homemade do-it-yourself DWC container built for success. I'm telling you we're taking this one all the way to the top with the Spider Farmer series light. It's basically Spider Farmer versus DWC to the moon. You guys have seen me do it everything with every other medium cocoa perlite flood and drain tables uh, with spider farmer so now we're gonna take it back to the roots we're gonna do a complete a complete do-it-yourself grow here what we're gonna do next is do the airlines we're going to run the airline tubing right now I would like to cut it just to the circumference of the bottom of that container I'm gonna go ahead and Connect one here. Loop it around. Try to find that perfect, the perfect loop, the one with least resistance. And I'm gonna take the one end, so you can see what I'm doing right now. I want to put a 90 degree bend in there. In order to do that, I'm gonna need something like this to do it. So I'm gonna feed four of these through and one for each corner. Okay, I got those compressions on. Let's cut a little piece of that. Put it here. Chop 
that off for too long. Okay, you can see where I was going with the compression ratio bends. So instead of it being a perfect, a perfect circle dangling around in here and just hoping that it stays uh, to the bottom, I've taken this compression fittings. You can see those 5 8 fittings typically used for um, outdoor ir irrigations. Connected them to two feed lines right here for the air inlets. And that's where we're going to come down from here. We're going to drill two holes here and we're going to feed two air lines right here. So essentially we'll be running the manifold like this with two open valves on either end closest to the diaphragms. It'll give you the most, out, most consistent output like that. slide this tubing I'm going to position the air the pump right in front of this typically I like to hide the air pumps in the back but given that I don't really want to crawl back there for a whole lot of anything I'm just going to kind of gauge this give it some length here the exact same length has. All right, we're going to match these up in length. I'm going to cut that again. Man, this is going to be the baddest DWC system. <laughs> this is the ultimate easy freaking under $20 DIY home, DWC home system I've ever built. So let me show you what we've done here. Woo! Here's our tubings, our airline tubing's coming in. Here's our level water line indicator. We've installed that. And inside we have a complete footprint and circumference of the uh, oxygen. I may even put one here in the middle. You know what? Let's do that right now. Let's put one in the middle. Cut this in the center. What you can see we've done is created an entire air grid right here within the per on the perimeter and in the center. We got two air airlines coming in. T off. Go to the left and the right. Go all the way around through our compression couplings. T's off again to come down for a center line. For a center air diffuser right there. They have a half inch line, three eighths. They got multiple sizes of this line. You can get it in any big box stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, any of that stuff. That's plenty of oxygen with this one little pump. I could even put an AP60 in here and really kill it with air. The reason I built it to the perimeter of the bottom is because the bottom is tapered down and it's more narrow at the bottom. So it's about a two inch offset between the bottom of the container and the top of the, of the container. So roughly just kind of eyeballing it, puts me about right there. And that's about directly underneath net pots. Once you put this on. So So you can see we do have our our feeding feed tube for the chiller. We have a return line for the chiller. We got our six net pots drilled. We got our water level indicator tube installed. We have our pump and the air lines installed. We pretty much did everything. We have our air diffusers. And that's it. That's all we need. All this stuff is new too. None of this stuff is used. This line is brand new. So all that I got to wait for now is you pump and you can see the nasty little chunks coming from the chiller. The chiller was pretty much brand new. And off of this one, this 170, let me see. 172 gallon per hour pump. There you go. If you guys want to scan the QR code, it's right there. 
just scan that screen it'll take you right to it um, it's just an eco 172 so that's general hydroponics or hydro farm something like that I think it's all the same but um, yeah it says eco plus but scan that barcode <laughs> I don't get any uh, permissions off any of this stuff so but that's plenty of water to return just for one bend. We don't need anything else. We're not running a recirculating system here, so that's quite unnecessary for a larger pump. All right, before I let you guys go, I made some modifications to the system. I'm gonna, I'll show them to you here in a second. I'll explain it first. Ultimately, I put these compression fittings on, and uh, they just seem to want to capture the air and float the corners. So I tried drilling some holes in it, and even that didn't help. It helped a little bit, but it did not cure the problem. Ultimately what I did is put some elbows. This is a one inch elbow. That's a half inch elbow. And this is a three quarter inch elbow. Kind of just tested out various sizes. If I had to go out and buy these specifically for this project, it was gonna be the, uh, the three quarter inch. It just seems to hold the line down and it holds it snug and in place as opposed to these ones. They're just big and kind of clunky and they just slide around on the line. This is a one inch, three quarter inch and the half inch. It's kind of buoyant a little bit. I'm sure it'll hold it down, but the three quarters seem to do the best job. I also added a grid. To the system so instead of just getting a circumference of the line I just put a bunch of T's I put a, a T right here and it goes all the way down to the other side right here and then I teed it here branched it over teed it here branched it over yeah three times so we got one down the center and then three down the middle uh, exactly three you can see that so how that works so I just wanted to make sure that I'm maximizing the output of the of the air pump. That way we got much more surface contact all the way around the plants for the air. And you can see that clearly. It's a big, big difference between uh, the first setup and this setup. So I gave that just basically like a two-day test and just made some minor adjustments before I'm going to upload this video make it live make sure everything is this is good to go all right guys Hyger hybrid if you guys got any questions concerns or feedback drop them in the box and i'll do my best to get back to you asap peace Woo!